So I just have to say real quick, I'm really glad George came home. Yes, so am I. I was so <laughs> worried. Yeah. He's calming down. He was quite a nervous wreck at first. I imagine he was telling you all about it, wasn't he? He was trying. <laughs> I didn't even know, like, I didn't know he was missing. I guess I missed that between the time that I spoke to you during extra credit. And then I saw the message about he came home. So how long? Yeah, he was gone I, for a couple of days or? Uh, he was gone during the snowstorm. Oh, my goodness. I know. Poor George. He, poor George. I had no, I thought he was probably dead somewhere. Oh, Lord. I bet and you then were he wasn't. Sick. Yay. But he is stinky. <laughs> he is stinky. Yes, needs a bath. Okay, here's an expression. Oh, well, that's an expression. Well, there's not that much you can do with it. I mean, there it is, but it doesn't equal anything. Uh, professor, it it's your screen is not on. Oops, thank you. You could use your imaginations. Not exactly what you're paying for, though. OK, this is the expression that was being asked about an expression that was being asked about. And there are different things you can do to an expression, but you can't very well solve it because to solve something, it has to equal something. So this is an expression. This is an equation. Now we can solve this. I guess what I meant um, by it. So there are certain problems and on the the review test and homework that we've had where they're written a certain way and it wants the answer a certain way. And if you don't put the answer in the correct form, then it's it not correct. So I was, yeah. Can you, was, can you t uh, point me to those problems? We can do um, one or two. You know, actually, I don't know. I was oh. just looking for an answer key. <laughs> If I if I come across one, I'll be sure to take note of it and do it as soon as I can. OK, um, another question I had was um, back up toward the beginning where we had the numbers like one over X to the third minus X squared or plus 17 plus one over whatever other expression and then equals how do solving, we solve solving yeah, how a do rational solve? equation. Yes, we can do that. All right, let me let me what do I need to do? This is what I need to do. Go back here and look for it. OK. Oh, and and how do you find the vertices? OK, we'll make a list and let me know. Ah, now here are rational expressions. Let's do one. I mean, rational equations. You can tell it's an equation because it has an equal sign. It has stuff on the left and stuff on the right. Now, let's do this one. We're going to solve this. We're going to attempt to solve this. All right, and the first thing I have to do is I have to figure out quickly, hopefully quickly, what X is not allowed to equal. I mean, why? Here it's a why. But same idea. What the answer cannot, cannot be. Because, for instance, if 
I were to work this problem out and get the answer y equals 11. Well, y equals 11 would give me 11 minus 11, and that would be a zero in one of the denominators. So everything would blow up. Couldn't have that. So I have to be very careful when I'm getting my answers to know what answers I'm not allowed to have. So the way you do that is you set each denominator equal to zero. Just the denominators, because they're the ones that can cause the most trouble. Get that smaller. Okay. All right, so y minus 11 equals zero. y squared minus 121 equals zero. And y plus 11 equals zero. Well, you can look at these and, and, and solve, for, for, solve for y, right? But here, let's do this. I should have written them side by side. That's so I can work down. So if I add 11 to both sides here, I get y equals 11. So that means I have to be very careful to make sure my answers that I get, my solutions will not include y equals 11. Now over here, this is the difference of two perfect squares. 121 is 11 squared. Okay, so. There's the factorization. All right, and subtract 11 from both sides. You get y equals negative 11. And add 11 to both sides. y equals 11. So this one gives us two numbers that x cannot be allowed to equal. And then over here, So here, here are the two numbers that X cannot be allowed to equal, and I make a note of it, <clears throat> a note of it somewhere, just to make sure. Y cannot equal 11, and Y cannot equal negative 11. So that's absolutely necessary. Now, we need to solve this. So I need to check how much room I have. And quite honestly, I am definitely going to need scratch paper. So I'm going to take this over to scratch paper because there just isn't room to solve it here. So it's very convenient to come up with this scratch paper. Okay. okay. 
Now that we know what y cannot equal, this is what I do. I have to calculate my uh, LCM. So calculate the LCM, the lowest common multiple. And that has to be the number that can cancel out each denominator. So my um, my denominators are these. And I've already factored this. So this is y plus 11 times y minus 11. Meanwhile, I've got a y plus 11 and I've got a y minus 11, y plus 11, y minus 11. y minus 11 is already in here and y plus 11 is already in here. So I can take care of each y plus 11 and y minus 11 just by making this my LCM. And here's what I do with LCMs. This is the overall strategy you always use for rational functions that are not proportions. That is, this is not one fraction equals one fraction. Therefore, you have to solve this way so that you can get rid of your denominators. All right, so. Part I'm having a really hard time with is knowing how to factor it out. OK, well, that takes lots of practice and we've been having this this practice for a while. So that should help you, too. But you've got to practice, practice, practice factoring. I can't think of any other way to get good at it. So here's what we're going to do. I draw these uh, elongated fraction bars. OK, there I have just rewritten the original equation, making sure everything is factored. And now I'm ready to write my LCM. No, I don't want that. I want this. In here and here and here. All right. See, you don't put it underneath. That's one of the big um, mistakes that people commit, that people do when they're trying to solve these. You only put the LCM, which is like an LCD, same exact idea. Uh, you only put it on top because you're multiplying every term in the equation Left and right, every single term, you're multiplying by the lowest common multiple. OK, so and the whole idea, the whole reason you're doing it is because these cancel out the denominators. So. Y minus 11 cancels Y minus 11. And y plus 11 cancels y plus 11. And y minus 11 cancels y minus 11. And y plus 11 cancels 
y plus 11. So now life is going to be easier for us. We find the leftovers, okay? This is gone, this is gone. All the denominators have to be gone. So what's left up here is y times y plus one. What's left up here is y. And what's left up here is y plus 12. So, well, so I'm going to be, I'm going to have y times y plus one, 11 plus y equals y plus 12. Now this is the whole reason I did that is look how simple this is. This is great. And we have an additional y minus 11 on the last one, correct? <gasps> Didn't even see it. Thank you for pointing it out. Yes. No. There, but even that is preferable to this. It's so much prettier than the original equation. Now, I'm going to multiply y squared plus 11y plus 1y equals y squared. Uh, well, y times y, y times minus 11, 12 times y, 12 times minus 11. So I made my arrows too big, but that's what we're going to do. All right. Never mind. y plus 12, y minus 11. OK, so we're going to have y squared minus 11, y plus 12, y minus 11 times 12. OK. 11 times 12. 132. OK. So we're going to have y squared plus 12y equals y squared. Um, I take away 11 and put back 12. That means I am one up plus y minus 132. And now since I have a quadratic equation, which is a degree two equation, okay, highest power two, I begin subtracting the shorter side over to the longer side. You make your own little rules as you go along. And look what happens. This is like Christmas. My y squared zero out, and I'm left with 12y equals y minus 132. And I'll, I guess I'll leave my one in front of there. So now I subtract one y and subtract one y. 12y minus 1y is 11y. Equals negative 132. And I divide by 11 and I divide by 11. And I see if 
11 will go into that. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. So y is going to equal negative 12. So now I can take this answer back over here. And though um, y cannot equal 11 or negative 11, nobody said anything about negative 12. So there I put my answer in the answer box. You'll do the same steps over here, except with this one, beware. This has a GCF, you've got to pull that out when you're looking at the factorization. This one trips people up only because they forget about the four. So don't forget about the four and you'll do fine. But this is the basic strategy for solving all, all uh, rational equations. Next question. How do you find the vertices? Vertex. We haven't gotten there. Uh, you haven't gotten there. Yeah, OK. Vertex. We haven't done that yet, have we? No, we haven't done that. I'm sure of it. Oh, I understand. Yeah, there's a different kind of vertex we're going to be working on. Let's find this vertex. You're correct. Assuming you can graph and shade the um, uh, solution to the inequality, you are then asked to find the vertex. There's only going to be one vertex. But the vertices means that's just the plural of vertex. So here's how. You turn this into a system, and we're going to use elimination or substitution. So 4y minus x equals 4, and 1y minus 2x equals negative 4. So it looks to me like it, well, I mean, I could use substitution, of course. But um, what if I were to multiply both equations by negative two? Or, or I should say equation one, line one, row one, uh, there we go. Call it R1 and R2. So if I make a recipe that says, I think I'll multiply negative two times row one, that would give me a positive two there, and add it to row two, that will eliminate my x's so that I can solve for y. So I'm going to do that. Should that have been y plus two x? Is it? Yes, thank you. No problem. So I can just multiply row one by two. So, two times row one is going to be two times four is eight y minus two x equals eight. And row two stays the same y plus 2x equals negative 4. 
So we're going to have 9y, this zeroes out, equals, just double check in here, 8 minus 4 is 4. So 9y equals 4, divide by 9, divide by 9, y is going to equal 4 ninths. Well, I really don't want to substitute y equals 4 ninths and deal with a fraction. I could. Instead, let me make a little more room. and just do elimination again. So 4y minus x equals 4, and y plus 2x equals negative 4. And this time I want to eliminate the y's and solve for x. So if I take row two and I multiply row two by negative four, that will give me four y minus four y, and I'll be able to eliminate the y's and then solve for x, so I'm gonna do that. So row one, I guess I should write it up here. Row one is 4y minus x equals 4 and negative 4 times row 2 is negative 4y minus 8x Negative four times negative four is positive 16 equals 16, is that right? Negative four, that'll be negative eight, that'll be positive 16, yes. So I add my rows together, these zero out, this will be negative nine x equals 20, divide by negative nine, divide by negative nine. So X equals, let's get rid of this. X equals negative 20 over nine. And so the vertex should be negative 20 over nine, comma four over Nine. But that's that's what you would do after well, presumably after you finish graphing. And that will be the point where the two lines meet, which is why you use equals instead of the inequality signs. Whenever you're working just with the straight lines you change the inequality sign to an equal sign. Professor, are we still going over old content or recovering new things? Um, we're covering what's in here. Okay. Okay, any questions about this? Okay, next request, it's up to all of you. So but then you got, we, you got to jump in there. Yes, what were you going to say? So then would we graph that, right? Yes. Okay. You would graph this line, you would graph that line, and then you would calculate where to shade. Because you have to shade inequalities. You want me to do that? Yes, please. Okay, glad to. Start from scratch.
Okay, if X is zero, we'll have four Y minus zero equals four. So four Y equals four, divide by four, divide by four. Y equals one. Now, if Y equals zero, we'll have four times zero minus X equals four. So we'll have negative X, which is negative one times X equals four. Divide both sides by negative one. I'll have X equals negative four. Now I graph those two points. Zero, one. And negative four, zero. And let's make this little guy go away for a while. Okay, now we graph this. Y plus 2X equals negative 4. If X is zero, we'll have Y plus two times zero equals negative four, so that Y equals negative four. And if Y is zero, we'll have zero plus two X. Is that a negative four for sure? Yes. 2x equals negative 4. We'll have 2x equals negative 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x will equal negative 2. So don't go too fast. That's what you learn. I tried zooming. Don't zoom. Zero, negative four. And negative two, zero. Well, not perfect, but better. Okay, now I'm paranoid. Okay, all right, now, now. Using the method that my math lab uses, you need to find a test point in each of these quadrants. If you're just graphing by hand, you can shade as you go, which is why it's easier to do that. But for those of you who use the My Math Lab method, let's do that. Suppose my test point is negative six, two. 
<clears throat> Television on. Good. All right, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this point and I'm going to put it into both of these inequalities. 4y. OK, 4y. Minus X. Ah, is less than or equal to four. This will either give us a true, false, true or false for each of these inequalities. So I will have eight plus six is less than or equal to four. Is that true? No, it gives me a false, right? 14 is not less than or equal to four. That's a false. When you're, the goal, what you're looking for is one of these quadrants that will give you a true and a true. There's only one that will give you a true and a true. If I've already got a false, I don't need to even bother checking the other line. So I'm going to move over. And I am going to find a test point anywhere in this quadrant. How about 0, 0,5? Okay. So 4 times 5 minus 0 is less than or equal to four. So 20 is less than or equal to four. And that's a false. If I'd gotten a true, I would have tried the other line. Okay, now I'm gonna try down here because I think that one's the answer. If I choose the point negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. All right, let's come up here. 4 times negative 5 minus negative 5 is less than or equal to 4. So negative 20 plus 5 is less than or equal to 4. That's going to be false because I'll have negative 15 is less than or equal to 4. Oh, that is true. That's true. Don't listen to me. It is true. Any negative number is going to be less than any positive number. Now let's check the other line. y plus 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So y plus 2 times negative, fi negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 4. So this is negative 5 plus negative 10. Is that greater than or equal to negative 4? Is negative 15 greater than or equal to negative 4? That can be tricky because you know 15 is greater than 4, so you're liable to say true, but it's not true. Here's negative 4, negative 15 is way out here. This says that negative 15 is to the right of negative 4, which would put it over here. 
but negative 15 is to the left of negative four. Therefore, this is false. So all three quadrants have given me at least one false. Now let's pick a point. How about zero, 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 zeros over here? And it's my favorite point. However, I could choose, I already have chosen that point, but let's choose zero, zero because it's fast. All right, so with the first equation, four times zero is zero, minus zero is less than or equal to four. Well, zero is definitely less than or equal to four. That's true. Now, y plus 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. 0 plus 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Oh, but x is going to be 0. So that's going to be 0 plus 0, which is 0, is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now this is tricky also because you're inclined to say no, but it's true. Zero is to the right of any negative number. Therefore, zero is greater than any negative number. So this is true. So this quadrant gave you a true true. And that's what you're looking for. So that's where you drag your paint bucket. But I want you to see, uh, we, our first answer was false over here. For both of these, let's see or I want you to see what the other answers are. So let's use y plus 2x is greater than or equal to negative four with this point right here. Oh yeah, with this point right here. So we're going to have y, which is two, two plus two times negative six, is greater than or equal to negative four. Well, this is two minus 12 is greater than or equal to negative four. So we're saying that negative 10 is to the right of or greater than negative four. Here's negative four, but negative 10 is about there. So negative 10 would be to the left of negative four, and this arrow is pointing to the right. So this is false. So this is a false false. Very important. One quadrant is always guaranteed to give you a false false. Now over here, since this gave us a true false, I can almost bet that this quadrant's going to give us a false true. So this should be true. Let's see. So our point over here is zero five. Five plus two times zero is greater than or equal to negative four. So five plus zero is five. Five is greater than or equal to negative four. That's true. So over here in this quadrant, we got a false true. And that's the way it will always work when you've just got two lines crossing and you're wondering where to shade. 
The other way is to make a quick sketch on your paper. A lot of people just don't like to do that. This is the alternative method. One quadrant, not necessarily this one, but one quadrant will give you a false false. One quadrant will give you a false true. One quadrant will give you a true false. And only one will give you a true true. That's where you shade. Now, sometimes, you never know when, you're going to luck out on getting the true true right away. Depending on how much of a hurry you're in, you can believe it or you can double check. Some people prefer this method a lot. So they don't have to draw. If you don't like to draw, this is the method for you. If you do like to draw, then making a quick sketch on your own paper. You know, and choosing 00, zero is your test point, whatever, however it goes. And then what? You would get, you would get what? You would get a true on this side. You would get a true on this side. So you'd end up shading. This would be where the overlap is. When you shade this way and you shade this way. If you make a quick sketch so you know that that's where you're going to drag your paint bucket. That's the method we used before. This is the method we used this time. So now you've tried both. You can see which one you like best. 